I want to explain a little bit the computation, but at a very high level, the computation on how to discover a solution, how the constraint programming solver will try to discover a solution. Um, the computational paradigm, as I already said, use the user states at a very high level constraints. But then these constraints will be exploited by the solver to discover a solution and make deductions. And so every constraint will be used to shrink, to reduce the set of possible values that every variable can take. And this is how you will gradually get closer to a feasible solution. And then uh, when all the constraints uh, cannot make any further deduction, you need to take an arbitrary choice. And there may be several different choices. And so what you will do in that case is that you will take a choice and uh, possibly if this, leads, if this choice was a bad choice, you will backtrack, come back and try the alternative path. Okay, the alternative uh, choice. So this is why constraint programming use backtracking search algorithm as well, because choices may be wrong. Let's consider one example, which is a famous combinatorial optimization problem or famous uh, combinatorial problem, which is map coloring problem. In map coloring problem, we want to color every country such that no two adjacent country have the same color. Okay, so this is one solution, for instance. Uh, it's proven, it's a mathematical property of this problem that you can color every kind of map with only four color. There is always a feasible solution with four color. This was, by the way, a major theorem that was proved by a computer. How to model this problem with constraint programming? How to express the constraints and the decision variables? So I will use a very uh, easy uh, imaginary programming language to do this, uh, to state my problem. And first, let's imagine what the variables will be. Of course, I will introduce one variable for each country, and the domain of the variable represents the set of colors that can be chosen for this country. Okay, and then you have the constraints, and the constraints is really uh, that the two adjacent countries cannot take the same color. Okay, so this is my model. You have one variable for every country, Okay, one variable for every country. And this is the domain. The domain is a set of colors and it can be black, yellow, red, or blue in this case. And then you have here the set of constraints. Okay, so this is your set of constraints. And you will say that uh, every adjacent pairs of countries must take a different value. So you say that Belgium must be different from France because they are adjacent countries and so on and so on. And Belgium must be different from Germany and so on. Then when you press the run button, this is a little bit what happens behind the scene with the solver. You will take an arbitrary decision initially. You will take, for instance, uh, the arbitrary, arbitrary decision to color in black Belgium. And as a deduction, uh, you can already decide. It's a little bit exactly like if you would play Sudoku. You will say that every adjacent country cannot take the color black anymore because uh, black was uh, assigned to Belgium and according to the rules, according to the constraints, adjacent country cannot have the same color. So you would remove the black from the adjacent countries like this, from Luxembourg, France, uh, Germany and Netherlands. And then you continue because you cannot really deduce anything more. So you will take the next arbitrary decision. Uh, let's say for instance that you decide to pick the color uh, green, uh, yellow for Luxembourg. What can you deduce then? Well, you can see that we have these two constraints that will be activated. And so you will remove the color yellow from uh, Germany and from France, like this, and so on and so on. Every time you take, you, you, you make a choice, you remove the colors, the, the, the other colors from the other country, and gradually you get closer to a solution, okay? And eventually you have a solution like this one. So, how the solver is using the constraints uh, behind the scene for you, like this. It will activate some constraints and then will remove for you uh, the, the variables that are, the values that are not possible from the domain of the variables. So when you decide the color uh, black for Belgium, this set of constraints will be activated one at a time. You take one, one at a time every constraint and then you will uh, decide to remove the value from the corresponding country. For instance, if you say this is black, it means that, for instance, the black color, which in France, 
is not possible anymore and so on and so on so this is really the constraint that will achieve this okay for the next one and so on. and so the constraint will charge if you want they will be in charge of pruning the search tree because initially you have all the possible combinations so if you take one country for instance belgium belgium has in all the possible four colors and then at the next level you have france again you have all the possible four colors and so on so you really have a huge search space but the constraint will prune for you they will decide okay this is not leading to a solution i stop there and they do that by removing infeasible values from the domains of the variables this is what we mean by pruning the search tree by pruning the domains okay or reducing the search space as possible this is pruning And branching, it means that when you have made all the deduction, you can take an arbitrary choice and branch and decide the next decision that will get you closer to a solution. In the next video, I will explain more in details uh, what we call the fixed point, which is an algorithm that is performed in every node of the search tree. And this algorithm will basically take one constraint at a time and make it uh, do all the possible deductions.